Hi, I'm Christy Moran. And Christy, what brought you to Paititi? Um, I first met Paititi about six years ago, and I was doing um, these short four-day uh, ceremonies, uh, learning about the plant medicines and um, the work that Roman offers and all of the teachings. And I really appreciated it, but I also knew that I needed to do the full month um, embodying true nature uh, retreat. So finally found the time to do it in my life, and that's why I was here. So um, came for uh, a significant amount of um, work that I wanted to do on myself personally, um, and how to bring some of the teachings and um, what I've learned back into my community at home. Can you speak to maybe what some of those things you were looking for? So before I came here, um, there was definitely some personal things in my life that I wanted to discover or continue working on or maybe find some understanding with. Um, I spend a lot of time um, on my own doing, um, I was uh, an only child growing up and um, spend a lot of time on my own and I have not ever really maintained a long-term relationship and uh, and that's always been a challenge for me. I've uh, get, gotten to an age where I'm no longer uh, 45 years old so I'm no longer um, able to pretty much have children and um, the family life and just wanted to discover my true nature and um, how I can navigate through my life um, without having the feeling of loneliness or isolation or try to understand um, how I can bring love into my life in other ways besides trying to find this um, like partner or relationship that um, is, doesn't seem to be working. So yeah, so I came here with a, just trying to look for this feeling like coming here feeling like I have a missing link or some kind of slippery gear and trying to understand what that is and um, so yeah that's what I came here for. Was there anything with uh, Paititi's approach that you particularly resonated with or found beneficial in your yeah. process? The thing that I there's a lot of things I find so beneficial with Paititi is um, that I find that the sharing circles are the most important to me in my learning process because I'm learning through everybody else's experiences as well. Um, understanding that it's not just me that's suffering with my stuff, it's actually other people are going through the, almost the same exact thing that I'm experiencing. Um, and it's their experience, but my experience just really, through their shares and through their process, I'm learning through my process. Um, that there's other people in the world that are suffering and um, and that my suffering is their suffering and that as we learn how to bring in that love and compassion and the opening of the heart space and the shared heart space and learning about that, that's something that has been so beneficial for me. Um, even before I came here, it was something that I was able to start integrating into my life. And I think something that I was reminded of during this trip is that um, I remember that I'm actually am doing a lot of the practices that I've been learning with PyTT and that my life has been really, really good um, over the time and coming here was just a huge remembrance of that, of the shared heart and uh, being in community of, um, with the intention of just becoming a better person and being able to communicate better and um, being transparent. Um, also utilizing the form of the I, um, knowing that it's actually, it's my experience and that I'm talk, I'm speaking not for everybody else but I'm speaking for just myself. And that actually is really healing um, for me to know that that I, I am having, you know, that my experience is validated as well. So the um, Tibetan Buddhist teachings are incredible. A lot of the um, texts that Roman brings about are always just really perfect for the time as we're learning different aspects of, of our lives and um, what we're exploring and um, especially like the healing nature of um, just how our emotions and our thoughts and our feelings and our past, um, our past experiences really resonate with maybe what our physical body is doing and just trying to make those connections and um, the practice of remembrance has been profound for me throughout this trip I've had the space and time 
to go into some pretty um, dark places in my life or places that I haven't really thought about in a long, long time or maybe I, I don't even remember thinking about that or that it actually happened. And so when those come through, the practice of just bringing love and compassion and forgiveness into those areas and forgiveness for people that might have had an effect on me in my life has been just a huge, a huge um, way for me to heal and accept that my life is beautiful and even though it's been challenging, those challenges are really what have been helping me become who I truly am and have compassion for others that that there is others are, other people are going through tough times and understanding and feeling for that having a feeling for that um, speaking of challenges were there any particular challenges that the embodied true nature course presented for you um, or something that you found that you had to work with some perennial challenges or anything yeah the challenges for me were cravings I was craving pizza the whole time and it's funny because I hardly ever eat pizza um, but boy it was kind of something that maybe carried me through some times of uh, space that I didn't want to deal with <laughs> and um, so that was one thing that was hard uh, but I appreciated just the amazing food that you get here when you do get the food <laughs> when it comes around and I'm um, just really appreciating um, all the love and that goes into the making food and um, the community aspect of eating food together and appreciating it. Uh, the, uh, like there's several challenges. I mean, I had a lot of homesickness uh, during the time that we spent um, being mindful. There was like three days where we were not eating food that had salt or any kind of spices in it and so really bland foods and spending three days um, kind of on your own and being silent was was pretty easy for me, but at the same time, I got really homesick, and it definitely brought up some um, pretty old uh, memories for me that needed to come up. And um, but the homesickness was really was challenging because I just wanted to go home, and and I, that reminded me that I love my home and my my life at home, and so that was really you know in a way like the challenges were really beneficial because I saw what was the most what what aspects of my life that were really uh, endearing and what I appreciated in my life and now I'll definitely go home really happy <laughs> were the challenges worth going through given the results that you received at the yeah, other end definitely challenges were were definitely necessary because otherwise I wouldn't have learned if it would have been an easy month then I would have felt disappointed that I didn't get the challenges. I definitely came here to be challenged, to see my true self and the challenges of being even triggered by the par other participants um, throughout the month really taught me how to see what was triggering me and what was in myself that was getting triggered um, and it really helped me learn about myself and um, some of the different things that I do that I want to continue to look at and I'll bring I'll definitely be bringing that aspect home with me of just being really aware of what triggers me and how to navigate that um, and taking other things back home are there any particular things that you see yourself integrating into daily life more yeah. and more yeah definitely I mean coming here with the with the intention of understanding why I'm allowing myself to wallow in loneliness and self-pity, I think that what I'll be doing when I go home is um, utilizing the community aspect and the three um, jewels of the Buddhism teachings that Roman offer, like um, Buddhism, or, uh, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, Sangha are really two things, or the three things that are going to help me continue on developing myself in the true way and really integrating um, my like capacity for love and passion and integrating it into my community space and all the work that I do I know that this feeling of of like love and um, there's a certain energy that comes through me when I'm working in my community that 
takes takes over that loneliness and so I just that creative manifestation you know it's when you really open your heart up it's it comes through in such a beautiful way and um, any time that I feel self-pity or loneliness I'm going to go back to my journals that I wrote here and remind keep reminding myself that this is going to be what I am falling in love with is myself and my community and that's what's going to carry me through the rest of my life and I'm really excited about it because now I have the tools to to continue being happy and and I know that self-pity will come through and that's part of the work that you do it just the work continues on and the journey continues on and it's just the beginning and, um, so yeah I'm really excited to go home and I'm really excited to just be and rest within myself and continue remembering everything that I learned here because I feel like I was a big sponge that just soaked it all up and I'm excited to see how it goes and be not afraid of feeling that self-pity or that loneliness because it's just a part of who I am and it's a part of my suffering and for as deep as my sadness can be I know now that my love and compassion is just as deep and it's in it's part of the same big ocean so is that good? <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to share uh, about your experience or for people that are potentially looking to come to an Embodied True Nature retreat in the yeah. future? Um, I guess what I would say to someone who is considering coming to Pai TT is that to get really ready to become very raw and be very vulnerable, like be ready to touch into vulnerability of the self because that's the only way that you're really going to break through and discover yourself is to face your fear of exposing your rawness to others. I mean, during the whole process, the sharing circle was so beautiful and I felt like I was in like ayahuasca group therapy the whole time. And I've never done that for myself where I've never been able to really let people see me because I get really shy I mean like I have huge shyness and and I'll you know I'll definitely will continue working with my shyness but to to really explore how it feels to be seen and to be vulnerable was probably the key for me to actually get into my own true nature and and love myself for that shyness and love myself for having self-pity and love others for having for them having their own stuff and their own shyness or vulnerabilities so yeah come with come with some vulner being ready to be vulnerable is a big thing for people I think at PITT and being ready to make changes and also be ready to realize that those changes are ongoing and to that, they, that knowing that you're going to be coming back with a pretty good sized toolbox, but knowing that when you return home after a month like this, the work continues and that it's just a lifelong or maybe many lifetimes of work and adventure and um, new experiences. <laughs>